Thank you very much. Oh, good. Uh, I just want to show you a banderol I found outside here. So I don't know if uh, anybody knows who owns it, but uh, you, knew you got the message, right? <laughs> this is circular economy. It's zero waste. I put it up here. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for the invitation uh, uh, to this um, Mesa. And um, I've been working now for six years with the Echo Park in, in, Stock in uh, Gothenburg. And um, we uh, had an idea that we should build a park because we had different recycle centers in Gothenburg. And people are bringing the bulky stuff there. And uh, we were thinking of, let's have all the things at the same place, shops and what they usually call a dump also, and take all the things out of this recycle center and sell it at uh, the spot. Um, new news about reusing. It's in the Bible, you know. <laughs> they said it many, many years ago. And this is what we know all are working for, that we should uh, transform the... The, the metal or whatever we're doing into something good instead. This is the city of Gothenburg, and uh, it is a fast-growing, sustainable city, uh, but we are, of course, also, uh, we also have a, a great, uh, great, I wouldn't say, a large incinerator, and uh, that's what I'm uh, trying to avoid, to feed as much as possible by reusing and, and prevent waste. Uh, this is the kind of system we have. We have curb collection and we have door-to-door -door collections. And uh, we also have an EPR system and packaging uh, responsibilities for all packaging. And uh, we have different spots due on the city where you can pick up, uh, where you can put all this packaging. And uh, we also have a, a special car, actually two cars going around the city to pick up hazardous waste from the households. And we also have these five different recycle centers where people usually go by car and a trailer to put everything that is more bulky, bulky stuff that doesn't fit into the normal waste bin. Um, the total recycling is, as you know, uh, it means wasting and attitudes that permit waste is unacceptable. And waste is a proof that something is wrong in the society. So we have to get it more sustainable. Uh, and it also means that something is r wrong and we need redesign, and we've seen a lot of this already today, that we talk about redesigning. And um, you recognize this hierarchy where we at uh, the recycle park, Alelika, we are in the field of reusing and of reduce, of course, and we also try to prevent uh, consumption. Uh, why should we have a recycle park? Uh, and what is a recycle park? It's actually not a recycling, it's more a reusing because we don't recycle very much there. But we have a lot of containers where people are sorting uh, the bulky waste they bring to the park. And um, the difference between a normal recycle center and, and uh, the recycle park is that we are confronting everyone who's coming into the park and asking what do they bring in to the recycle center? And then we try to unload the trailer and the cars, and uh, we try to sell it in the shops. So we had a concept that it should be an amusement park for reusers and recyclers. It should not be like going to an ordinary recycle center. It should be a more fun thing also. Uh, it's been on now for six, almost seven years, and this is the way it looks like. It's uh, 30,000 square meters. And uh, we have the more normal recycle center, which is the smaller part of the whole park. Uh, and then we have a packaging center also where all the packaging will be put into different containers because of the uh, producer's responsibility. And we have the sorting station, which is the new, new, unique thing for the, whole, for the whole park. And we also have the different entrepreneurs, one is selling all the construction materials, and one is selling the more normal second-hand stuff, and we have uh, workshops and a restaurant. Uh, we also used, of course, old buildings to rebuild the, the old houses and bring them into the park, and it took us 13 months to, to do the whole park, 
and it contains about nine different houses and, and, and uh, the sorting station. This is what happens when people are coming into the center. Before they go up to the center, they come to this sorting station. And you know, like in a car factory, when the engine meets the body of the car, they call it the marriage point. So this is our marriage point. This is where we connect with all the visitors coming here. And we are asking them if they have anything they want to donate, or we also help them to pick up all the hazardous stuff and all the things that should not go into a container. It means all electronic stuff and all chemical stuff. So then they are really surprised because they were thinking when they were leaving home, they were just going to the dump and they were sorting into the, to the different containers. And then we ask them if they have anything to donate. And they say, no, I just have a lot of um, waste are going to go up to the center and throw it away. And then we start helping them to unload and say, this we can use and this we can sell and so on. And then they really get surprised. And that's something that is very important because everybody loves to donate. So they think, smart idea. So that's where we start to make the first influence in their behavior by telling them and that we can reuse and we can resell these materials. So this is what it looks like when they come into the, to the recycle center. We have people working here and helping them as much as possible to put the different products into the right space. And then we, from here, we take it into the different entrepreneurs. Uh, and you can also leave, every, you can leave almost everything here, uh, whitewares and all electronic stuff. And we also like to have it should be nice because on a recycle center normally it's quite dirty and it doesn't look so nice. So I, I painted all the containers in white so it should look nice and clean. It's very important also that people really feel that they are not in a dump, they are in some different things. This is a container at a normal recycle, where we, recycle center where we try to collect uh, things for, for uh, reselling. It doesn't look that nice. So in the park, you know, we have to organize everything. So it looks more like a department store. And this is a picture of the normal recycle center, and this is the way it looks in the park. So it's very important that we have it nice and clean also. This is one of the buildings, and they are selling the, the normal uh, secondhand shop, uh, secondhand goods like uh, textiles and, and furniture and stuff. And it's like a regular secondhand shop. Um, and this is the part, the entrepreneur that's selling the, the um, construction materials. And all, everything you can see on the picture is things that people were aiming to throw in the container. And uh, we have a lot of different items coming in all the way, and uh, we are selling a lot also. People are coming there not only to donate or throw away things, they also come there to buy. And uh, this is the third entrepreneur, which are creating a lot of things by the different workshops they have. And uh, they also have uh, the workshop for repairing of bikes. We have about 5,000 bikes coming in every year from the city. Uh, and uh, they repair most of them and they sell them again. And there is, of course, a restaurant. We have 45, 50, 40 or 50 people coming every day having an uh, organic lunch. We have a contract with this entrepreneur that says you need 70% uh, of all the food you serve should be organic. So we are influencing people in that way also. And uh, people have one dream of waste. It should be easy to get rid of it. So we are trying to make it easy for them to donate and we are trying to make it easy for them to buy secondhand. And uh, it should also be easy for them to understand what kind of systems we are working with in the city. So we have also to explain the city system of waste uh, collection. And uh, we have to make them understand what kind of system we are working with. Um, so we have about three or 400 visitors a day. And the turnover now is uh, one point two million euro, so everybody in the park is actually making money now out of the thing we call waste. And uh, the most important thing is, of course, that we also created a lot of jobs. We have uh, work training and practicing 
uh, coming into the park and uh, if they are doing a good job, they finally get a regular job. So we have about 25 people who have a regular job now. They're working for the city. And they are, most of these people are people that had problem getting into the normal working market of different reasons. And um, we also have a compost plant that we are giving away compost soil. And uh, we have a lot of people coming from uh, all over the world actually to look the way we, sort, we solve the problem. And of course, a lot of uh, cities from uh, municipal municipalities from Sweden uh, has also been looking at the park. And there are a lot of copycats coming up now. Uh, this was about uh, four and a half million euro to build it. So a small society or small municipality, they can't afford it, but they are scaling it down. And uh, it works in a few more cities now. Uh, and the increasing uh, group of people coming to the park are just coming there to donate things. So it means that we influence people's behavior and uh, we are very happy that they are coming. And it means also that we get better things coming in to the park also. So we are raising uh, the level and the standard of all the items we are selling. And that we also are active against uh, talking to them and we are very active to them and we are also, you know, lecturing them more or less, but they don't know it. Um, well, prevention facts. I have a lot of facts if you want to have figures. I don't have so many figures, but there is a report of how much waste we are preventing in the park and the effect of it. We put it into a LCA analyze so you can see how much CO2 equivalents we are saving and so on. So I don't go into so much about the, the figures, but there, here is some figures from the recycled park and the conventional center, the difference. We had 494 tons coming in, and then you can see the reuse was 358 in the, in the, in the recycled park and only 52 in the, in the normal recycle center. So the figures are quite clear. You are, private, you are preventing a lot of waste and you are saving uh, the environment, of course. And these are the items. Uh, that we've been measuring when we were doing this report. Uh, it's a lot of furniture, textiles, and, and building materials. And we have a lot of different actions going on in the park. We have a personal sorter. If you come to the park, you can have a personal sorter going up to the ramp, helping you to sort, to make you understand the system. We have shows, different shows, orchestras playing in the sorting station. We have a dog that can sort into six different uh, waste paper baskets. Uh, so, if the dog can, you can. <laughs> and we have, you know, clowns, we have famous people from TV shows coming, evaluating things, you know, people want to know if this has a great value or not. And we have art exhibitions, we have 1,000 paintings every year, we cover the whole park with paintings, and we sell them for almost nothing, you know, and people are going away and uh, having got some culture also. And we had the first uh, waste concert in the world. To get a ticket to get in, you, you have to come with some kind of waste, like 10 pet bottles, then you got the ticket, or two kilos of textiles, then you get a ticket. Just, you know, to promote and, and change people's behavior a little bit. So it was a rock concert with five different uh, uh, orchestras playing there. It was a great success. So where do we get our inspiration from? Like everybody else, the only place where you can stay still for a while. It's a toilet which contains 75 different paintings. So we sold last year 125 paintings from this area. It's an art <laughs> exhibition, it's a gallery. And uh, I've been promoting the park all over the world and uh, I met the Queen and, and, and King in, in Sweden in Rio last year and I gave them a t-shirt because they have to earn it and he is now promoting the park and their environmental thinking a lot. So. You have to be an activist also. Uh, and you have to go around the world to show everyone that you have a t-shirt and it has a good message, it's a red heart. And uh, I think we have such a great moderator here. So I think we should give him a t-shirt. Oh, Is that good? <laughs> Thank you. 
So many famous people having it. <laughs> one of them left uh, because he, Potoshnik, also got one, of course. Um, I had to, you know, flatter him a little, but no, I had to send a picture for him. Okay. So the conclusion is you have to work hard, and I've been working hard all over the world. This is 12 hours work in Laos, in Vientiane. I was collecting waste, and it gave me, together with a, with a woman, and it gave us $2.95. Uh, and we went to a place and we sold it. So you have to work hard, and um, you have to do your work out. It should be no bury and no burn. And zero waste is more the journey than the destination. It's the way we, we are changing our behaviors and the system like circular economy. We have to, to rethink, as somebody said before. And I believe in the brain and the hands. There is no app for this. You can't download it. We have to do the work. That's the only way. So this is also a <laughs> I should flatter him, but he, <laughs> he left. But this was when John Mark and Zero Waste Europe were in Europe, in the EU Parliament. He tweeted and said, Zero Waste is completely possible. And that made us really, really strong and encouraged the whole movement, actually, all over the world. So we were very happy for that. So this is the old quote from the Vietnam War, make love, not war. And now we transform it by Paul Connett, make love, not waste. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that